What's up, everybody? This is Trey Biddy with hogsports.com. That's H-A-W-G sports.com. Right now, $1 for your first month at hogsports.com. Today on Hog Sports Live, we're going to break down fall camp. There's so much that's going on this past week, the second and a half week, I guess, if you want to call it. Uh, so much that's gone on this past week, and um, we're going to break all that down. Danny West is going to join us. We're going to talk a little bit of Razorback recruiting. Keith Grayson going to join us to shoot some bull, all that and more on Hog Sports Live. Okay, first I want to apologize a little bit because we've only been doing this show on Fridays. Normally it's a Monday, Thursday show, but with fall camp, 20 practices over 24 days, it's almost impossible uh, to get the show in, especially in the morning when we like to do it kind of late morning. So it's been difficult to get the show in because there has been so much practice stuff. I mean, even when you think about – uh, you know, Friday, you don't have any practice, any media availability or Sunday, but really those days are spent kind of gathering everything and catching up because there's so much stuff, so much content coming out of there. Um, but I want to thank everybody for watching the show. The response has been amazing. We're, we're five stars on, on Apple podcast. And, you know, I think it's a, that kind of goes back just kind of the way, you know, we cover the team, you know, actually, going to the team. I think there are a lot of media people out there who cover the media that cover the team. Whereas, you know, people like me, Danny, Pete, we're actually going to practices, getting out there, figuring out what the news is. You can spot people that kind of do that a lot of times. They're kind of like, you know, they're always going to tell you like it is, tell you how it is and uh, objective, realist, all that kind of talk. You know, usually those people don't have any sources and don't cover the team. Actually, they just kind of cover the media. So uh, I think that's one reason the response has been so good. And I want to thank everybody. If you like the content that we're bringing at hogsports.com and hogsports live, go ahead and give us a thumbs up right now. Plenty of ways to watch and listen. You can watch us on Facebook Live, hence the name Hog Sports Live, always streaming live there. YouTube, throw us a thumbs up if you haven't done so already, and uh, subscribe to the channel and hit that notifications bell so you're notified anytime that we upload a new video. Available on Apple Podcasts, as I mentioned, we're five stars on Apple Podcasts. We'd love to have a review from you to continue uh, to bump our channel up the ranks. Uh, so give, give us a, a review on Apple Podcasts. Either take a time out now or wait till after the show and give us that five-star review. Also available on Spotify and Stitcher. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Um, it's been a nice run for us so far. And, again, apologize for only one show a week here lately. Um, and, we, you know, that's even true with, like, the Hog Hustle. We do that one day a week. For those who listen to the Hog Hustle, it's in northwest Arkansas now, also in central Arkansas uh, on 103.7 The Buzz. But that's a little different. Like, we squeeze Tuesday episode in after practice, the open portion of practice, in between press conferences. So that was the only time that I was able to slide in and do that. So, uh, also pay attention to the Hog Hustle on 103.7 The Buzz and, uh, of course, up in northwest Arkansas, too. So, I want to jump into a few things here with injuries first, okay? So, the injuries have started to pile up a little bit. I remember day one when I'm, you know, charting all the injuries and I, I put Noah Gatlin's name down day one and there might have been one other. I'm thinking, okay, too, this thing's about to expand because it always does. It's football Players get hurt in football, obviously. Part of the part of the game is staying healthy. Uh, but it has really expanded. And, you know, I will say, while it looks daunting looking at the list, in reality, most of these guys are short-term injuries, okay? So TJ Hammonds, is, these are some of the players who just recently returned. And this is as of day 12, and they should be on the field right now. Practice is closed today, but they should be on the field right now. It's 11-24 for practice 13 uh, which is going to be a lighter practice as they go into Saturday scrimmage. But T.J. Hammonds returned yesterday in green. He'd been going through concussion protocol. Asa Sharon is a walk-on linebacker who, who returned yesterday. Amante Spivey, his second day in green yesterday. Jarquez McClellan's third day in green. And Gregory Brooks Jr.'s second day in green. We know he has a hyperextended thumb. Uh, nothing, nothing that should keep him out. The players who uh, missed practice entirely – uh, on Thursday, C.J. O'Grady, obviously he's had surgery on his knee. A little bit of a dramatic tweet from C.J. He has a flair for the dramatic sometime, but um, it sounds like it's going to be fairly minor. It, the coaches said two weeks. I don't know if it's a meniscus deal. They said sprain, but that can mean a lot of things. Usually when coaches say that, and I'm not saying this is what C.J. has, but usually when coaches say that, it's meniscus. So I would think it's probably going to be a little longer than two weeks unless it's super minor. Okay, Kendall Catalan was absent, walk-on wide receiver, brother of a scholarship 
uh, safety Jalen Catalan. Corlin Jackson was absent. Obviously, we know he's having his knee scoped also. That's unfortunate because he's been dealing with a lot of stuff. Colton Jackson, they're resting his foot. Not sure exactly what that means, but they're resting his foot, and they expect him to be ready for game day. Same thing with Austin Capps. Expect him to be ready for game day. Uh, he's got a uh, he had surgery on his right knee, had a sleeve out there on Thursday. Dalton Hyatt has missed seven practices with a hamstring, quarterback turned wide receiver. Eric Gregory, uh, that's the one guy we didn't get clarification on Wednesday from Chad Morris on injuries, but he has missed eight practices now and has been seen in a walking boot. And of course, we mentioned Noah Gatlin, who's out for the season. So, also got a depth chart broken down four deep how they went on Wednesday, or excuse me, how they went on Thursday, which is. I mean, that's a lot, four teams, and we're able to see that because they're splitting up on different fields. Um, I wanted to jump in, though, on what's going on in practice. Let me make sure everything's going smoothly here on Facebook Live. Yep, we've got a lot of people on, got some questions. I want to remind you to go ahead and throw your questions in now if you haven't done so. Um, we're going to have Danny West join us a little later and Keith Grayson, as I mentioned also, so we'll answer your questions uh, as soon as a, a bunch of those build up. So um, I just want to go over a few things. Got a little practice video going for those watching. Um, let's start with Rakeem Boyd. So Rakeem Boyd has had his best week of practice, okay? He's had his best week of practice these past four days. Now, three days in a row, he was the number one back in terms of effort graded, okay? Number one back. And probably was yesterday, according to Jeff Trailer. This is what's crazy. And Rakeem told us this the other day, that he did not tell the coaching staff that he had – a torn labrum and rotator cuff that's still bothering him, couldn't raise his shoulder above his above his arm. He did not tell them that until after the season. This injury goes back to Texas A&M. He played with it all year at Independence Community College and ran for 1,400 yards and then played with it all year last year. And, you know, despite Jeff Trailer calling him soft, trying to say everything he could to motivate him, to stay in games and to tough and to be tougher, had no idea, and Rakeem Boyd never said anything about his injured shoulder until after the season. Trailer said he went from feeling like six foot three to about four foot ten, and is never going to question uh, Rakeem Boyd's toughness again. So that says that says a lot. That's a football player right there. Now maybe not the smartest thing to do, but that's a football player right there. Uh, ran for 100, 123 rushes, 734 yards last season, six yards per carry, and really didn't get going until midseason. So I'm expecting big things from Rakeem. You know, just the fact that he's working with his offensive line more. You know, really just jumping into it two days before camp started, added 15 pounds in two months. You know. Working with that offensive line, getting your tracks down, making sure you're staying tight, understanding how the blocking seams work, all of that stuff's going to make him a better back. And being a fourth-year junior, I don't think it's unreasonable to think that he's probably going to have a chance to go pro after the end of the year if he stays healthy. If he stays healthy, he's going for over 1,000 yards. And that brings me to 2020. Who's your guy in 2020? Because Dev will all be gone. The guy that's turning heads is Traylon Smith, Arizona State transfer Traylon Smith. I mean, everybody is raving about him. I'm going to tell you what uh, – here's what Hayden Henry said, linebacker Hayden Henry. Where is it? All right. He's like water. He slips through the cracks every play. He's a very dynamic back. He breaks tackles. He jukes people. He's got great acceleration. Too bad he has to sit out this year because – he could be a really good player for us. He did some really good things, absolutely. He played 58 snaps in the scrimmage because they had some of the younger backs get hurt and they had to put him in there, which gave him 118 chances to be graded, and he had pluses on 107 of them. Jeff Trailer says he's an absolute pro. And I will say this from behind the scenes, people who watch practice who have told me this, he may be the best back on the roster. That has been told to me. He may be the best back on the roster. So we'll have to wait till um, 2020 to find out more on Traylon Smith. This is a guy that under the previous staff at Arizona State played and got one carry in the first game in 2017, and they burned his red shirt. He didn't play again. Burned his red shirt for one carry. So not a great start to that. And with, um, with the new staff at Arizona State, uh, didn't have a very good um, – start with Herm Edwards, was suspended the first two games, didn't play his first game until week four against Washington, had eight carries for 56 yards, but on a pass play, he had a critical 
fumble in Huskies territory uh, in a 27-20 loss and had one carry in each of the next three games. So not a very good start. Sometimes you just need a fresh start, and that's what he's getting at Arkansas. But they say this is a kid that just absolutely loves playing football. That's all he talks about and has a lot of talent. So reason to be encouraged for Traylon Smith based on what we're hearing behind the scenes. Wide receivers right now, I mean, a lot of the talk is obviously going to TQ Jack or excuse me, Traylon Burks, TQ Jackson, uh, and Trey Knox. Those three wide receivers are really drawing a lot of headlines. There's been a lot of stuff with Knox. Some of the catches that he's made, obviously, uh, more recently with Traylon Burks. TQ Jackson's starting to come on. This is a guy that played in a different type of offense, so he's having to learn a lot more. But you're starting to hear how much he can roll his speed, how impressive that has been. The guy that people are sleeping on right now are Mike Wood, is Mike Woods. I mean, Mike Woods had 18 catches as a freshman. I mean – didn't get started until really midseason. Again, here's another guy who suspended the first couple of games. Uh, but he has really been solid in camp. So uh, Mike Woods is another guy that, uh, as a junior, that could end up – I think what is going to end up shaking out some kind of way. I don't know how they work slot and flanker and all that stuff. But, you know, Dion will probably end up, you know, playing more slot is how I see it. That's not how it's going in open practices right now. But I just feel like Mike Woods, Trey Burks, Traylon Smith – or Traylon, uh, Traylon Burks – Trey Knox uh, and Mike Woods, those are going to be your your go-to receivers. And then, of course, C.J. O'Grady when he gets healthy. I think Grayson Gunner can have a good season at tight end also. Um, speaking of that, you know, who steps up in, in O'Grady's absence? I, and I think you got, um, you know, Hayden Henry, Grayson Gunner, Blake Kern, Chase Harrell. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of options at, at tight end. But Hudson's coming off concussion protocol, so – He's working his way back. Being a freshman, that's going to set you back a little bit, obviously. But um, I, I think I could see a scenario of Gray, O'Grady's not back for Ole Miss. Grayson Gunner having a good game against them. It's where his father played. He was recruited from by Ole Miss and uh, and um, is from Mississippi. So that's kind of where things stands with tight end. But here's the difference. Uh, you know, we don't know exactly what they have in Hudson. I mean, I think he's going to be a really good player. But he's still a freshman. He missed a week of practice. There's only one NFL caliber tight end on this roster I think and that's O'Grady maybe the jury's still out on Grayson Gunner possibly but uh, I've heard a lot of talk about Chase Harrell he still has uh, to me a lot to prove I mean I I think back to that um, Colorado State game you know where the ball went through his hands and hit him in the helmet you know and would have been a big catch and I've seen him drop a lot of passes in practice maybe the change of position is going to help him but um, you know pretty average in the hands department from what I've seen so far um Let's see here. Offensive line. We got to go over the offensive line, of course. Offensive line. Dealing with some injury stuff. There's a lot of shakeup back and forth. I mean, you've got Kirby Adcock been working at your starting left guard with Austin Caps out, Myron Cunningham at your left tackle with Colton Jackson out. How are things going to shake up when those guys get healthy? Dustin Fry has said that he uh, he expects both Caps and Colton Jackson be available for the opener. So how are things going to shake out? We know that they want to get Myron Cunningham in the starting lineup. They say he's one of the five best guys. They've worked him at a number of different spots. Maybe it could be that right guard spot. They seem pleased with Dalton Wagner, who was going to be in a competition with Noah Gatlin before his ACL tear. But they seem really pleased with Dalton Wagner. It feels like the guy that may be getting challenged a little bit could be Shane Clinton at, at right guard. Um, possibly Austin Capps, too. But they've literally worked – Dalton Wagner, or excuse me, that literally worked uh, um, Myron Cunningham at, at all four spots except for center. And so far, Ty Clary's done good. You know, people ask about how his snaps have been, so they have to run a lap or do 10 push-ups if they have a bad snap. And so far, he's ran one lap and, and done push-ups one time. So only two bad snaps, I guess, uh, so far for him. Bo Limmer, backup center, is a little more challenged right now because he did play tackle in high school. So they're, they're trying to work him in. So that's where things are on the offensive line right now. The good thing is with any injuries and stuff that they have, they're just able to handle it a lot better than they did last year. Defensive linemen, I mean, a lot of the talk is about these young guys who's going to contribute early. Mateo Soli, I think, is definitely going to help this team and, and may push for a starting job before all thing, everything's said and done with, with Gabe Richardson. Um, Eric Gregory has been out. Zach Williams is going to play. Colin Clay is going to play. This all according to Steve Caldwell. Now, maybe I think ideally it works out where you maybe are able to redshirt one or two of those guys, um, you know, and only play them in four games, just depending on how things work out. Up front on the interior, uh, I think there's a more of a possibility you're able to redshirt Marcus Miller, Enoch Jackson, Torian Carter. 
Uh, you really want to have five at least defensive tackles ready to play. Jonathan Marshall, you know, Nick fullwater has been out, but, it, you know, you'd assume he'd come back. Isaiah Nichols uh, is another one, um, you know, in addition to the two starters, T.J. Smith and McTelvin Aguim. So I think they, as long as they stay healthy there, they may be able to redshirt. And it may come to a situation also where you play Marcus Miller four, Enoch four, and Torian four, four, and then, you know, you get away with it. That would be ideal. You get through 12 games with one of those freshmen and redshirt all of them. That would be that would be perfect. Linebacker, not a whole lot to say at linebacker with the starters. Obviously, with Dijon Harris is going to be your stud this year, so you've got him in the mix, obviously. And then you've got um, uh, uh, Bumper Pool, of course. And Bumper has had a good spring from all accounts. Hayden Henry has had a really good spring. There's a lot of players that talk about what a good – uh, camp Hayden Henry has Grant Morgan is a total effort guy guys just going to give you everything he's got football smart uh, he's going to he's going to be able to help them this year and hopefully they stay if they stay healthy there then you start feeling a little bit better about that too deep um, and then you've got you know some other guys Devon McClure who's been working in there who's added weight he's also been working at Sam along with Hayden Henry Hay- Hayden Henry will start at Sam against Portland State they'll run a 4-3 base their base defense against them because they do you know, you're going to see more like uh, 12 personnel, 21 personnel type of stuff with them. So they will run more base against Portland State. Um, in the – where are we at? Secondary. Joe Fouché having a good camp. Cam Curl having a good camp. Um, you know, I think a lot of talk when you talk about the secondary is the nickel position because you've got Greg Brooks there. But who's after Greg Brooks? Who's after Greg Brooks? You've got Nathan Perotti, Simeon Blair, Micah Smith. You know, Micah's a redshirt junior. He's actually done some good things in practice, but hasn't really contributed throughout his career. Perotti's a walk-on. Blair's a walk-on. I mean, that doesn't – I don't know. I mean, on the surface, you know, who knows, but that doesn't sound real encouraging about that nickel spot. And, you know, they can't always go with McClure or uh, Hayden Henry, you know, as the Sam linebacker when they go to a 4-3. And both those guys have coverage ability, just not the same level as Gregory Brooks. I kind of thought they would move Jalen Catalan over there, but they've been working him at the free safety, which is the harder safety position to learn. Being a freshman, they want to make sure he gets a hold of that. People know I don't like freshman safeties or freshman linebackers. I just think they get you into too much trouble because it's it's difficult to learn and it's such a critical, especially safety. I mean, that's your last line of defense, really. So, um they do work when they go to a dime package, which you, obviously you'll see them do this season. You know, they'll have Greg Brooks as the nickel, and then the extra D back will be Joe Fouché, who will come down from safety and play that dime spot. And, and they'll do the same thing with Jalen Catalan. Uh, and then they move Miles Mason in at safety behind them. So that's kind of how they work that position. Uh, you know, at cornerback, obviously those young guys, um, you know, there's been a lot of talk. Monteric Brown, every, I haven't seen it because we don't get to watch them scrimmage much. We barely get to watch them in team. But coming from the spring to what he's doing now, it feels like Monteric Brown is on the verge of having a really, really good season. I mean, everybody's raving about Monteric. We knew he had the talent in high school. I think it was number 121 overall prospect in the country coming out, played safety as a freshman, and then moved to cornerback last fall camp. So he's spent a full year at cornerback now. What else we got? Yeah, we pretty much covered the D-backs. Ladarius Bishop's another guy that they're really uh, pleased with. Two Ashdown, Arkansas guys. Jarquez McClellan certainly has a lot of confidence. Uh, just a couple of quick hitter things. Gabe Osaboy and dismissed from the Razorback basketball team. All kinds of rumors surrounding why he was dismissed. Um, I think obviously a lot of people get frustrated with Gabe. He does provide some things defensively. The problem with Gabe is he didn't really know what he was good at sometimes, you know. Um, shooting a three-pointer like it was his first time, just very slow release, had no business shooting three-pointers. I don't think that Musselman was going to let him shoot three-pointers anyway this year, but obviously not an, a deal this year. Contributed 15 minutes a game last year, started some games uh, for Arkansas, but uh, no longer with the team as of yesterday. I didn't get into punting, but Sam Loy, I've been, t- I've been clocking his punts. He's, he, he does several over four and a half seconds, and that's obviously important. By the way, somebody on the Razor's Edge made a great point the other day because we always talk about 40s, and when are you running 40 yards? Well, punt goes about 40 yards. Good point. Good point. You need to be able to run a 40 fast to cover punts, and that's the most critical position or the most critical play in football, I'm convinced. I mean, there's so many things that can go wrong. There's so many things that can go right for you off of a punt and you show me a team that 
you show me a team that's bad at punt and punt return, I'll show you a bad team overall because that's a third of the game right there out the window. All right. I think we pretty much covered most of the stuff that I wanted to get to. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into bringing my man Danny West in. Danny West is going to provide a little bit of recruiting information for us. Where's Danny's graphic? There you go. All right, let me get him on the horn. Danny West. Hey, Trey Biddy. What's up, Danny? How you doing, man? I'm doing good. How are y'all? We've been good. We've been talking Razorback football. We've had a good time. We thought we'd bring you in for a little bit of recruiting. Let's do it. So, what's the latest? I mean, obviously, we're in a dead period here, so not a whole heck of a lot going on in recruiting. Everybody's focused on camp. Arkansas has 20 practices over 24 days. So, what can you tell us? What's the latest, huh? What's the very, <laughs> as of this hour, what has happened? Yeah. Hey, uh, I updated the big red board, defensive big red board this morning, added a new name at corner, a guy who's currently committed to another school. Um, a lot of people still concerned at safety tray where a lot of the guys are still listed at cool mm -hmm. on the board right now. So it's concerning. You know, I don't like it. It, it is. <laughs> but at the same time, you know, we keep talking about Darren Turner, four star athlete out mm -hmm. of Memphis, you know, if he were to choose Arkansas, and now this is a guy that told us on Hog Hustle, I prefer to play offense, but I'm more than willing to play whatever the team needs. That's what you want to hear, mm -hmm. right? So if he were to choose Arkansas, and right now I've got Arkansas in the lead for Darren, then maybe he's your answer. And, it, you know, if you can follow up what you got last year, you know, they've, they've done pretty well at safety lately. You think about two years ago, Miles Mason, Joe Fouché, you come in with uh, Jalen Catalan this past year. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's, that's a pretty good group to build around. So if you could follow that up in year three here, what I call year three, with um, uh, you know with a Darren Turner, that caliber of guy, then I think it answers. It makes you feel a lot better about the situation. But until then, think you think you got to get a couple of guys on, on campus, Donovan Johnson, Nick Wait, you Turner. Think, you think Darren Turner is going to play DB? Not wide receiver. Well, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If he if he does choose Arkansas, I think my my first move would be to try to convince him he mm -hmm. needs to play safety. So That's this what is I'm he's the number 161 overall prospect in the country right now uh, on 24/7 Sports. So he's definitely a well regarded player. Arkansas has 12 scholarship defensive backs on the roster, according to mm -hmm. Ron Cooper, safety's coach. They're gonna it's gonna take 10 to 12 defensive backs just to get through the season, just to get through the year. So they don't have any seniors at defensive back either. Is Brito a senior or is he a junior? I think Brito might be a, a senior. So he, but Brito's he, a senior. He's, yeah, he's been injured his entire career, has never really been healthy. So that just kind of gives you an idea. Mark Smith talks about bringing in five defensive backs. Safe, or he said corner nickels, nickel types. Everybody yeah. wants more players than they, they should get at their position group. <laughs> sure. And, and I'll tell you this, Trey, it wouldn't surprise me at all. And we, we kind of talked about it um, off the record this morning. It wouldn't surprise me if there's a potential transfer mm -hmm. out there somewhere that, you know, maybe they uh, entertain that, that thought a little bit. So, you know, I don't think that's going to happen immediately, like between now and the start of the season. But, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if at some point next, you know, after January, maybe they look into that and maybe they've already got something in mind there. So, mm -hmm. They definitely need corners, but I mean, yeah. they got uh, Greedy Vance on board. You're still waiting on Dwight McLaughlin, a uh, kid out of Houston, Texas there. I think Brian they get George. him, Danny. I think they get Do McLaughlin. You? Just based on what I'm hearing with other people in the network. Yeah. I, feel like. I mean, if uh, the the one concern I, I've had for Arkansas's sake when it comes to Dwight is Georgia. You mm -hmm. know, if Georgia made him a priority, I felt like, uh, Georgia would probably win out on that. And right what I'm, so, what know, I'm they're, hearing they're from rolling. people in Georgia right now is that he's not. That's right. Yeah. So That's right. So things so, could always change in recruiting, though. Yeah. Yeah, you never know. But, uh, yeah, Mark Smith has done a good job with Dwight. He's just got to get on campus, man. He was supposed yeah. to He was supposed to have been here in July and uh, wasn't able to make it. And uh, Don't want to uh, have so, too many you know, of those in a row. No. 
Danny West joining me from hogsports.com. I want to remind everybody there's plenty of ways to watch and listen Hog Sports Live. Apple Podcasts, throw us five stars after the show or take a break right now and throw us five stars. Also on Spotify and Stitcher. Facebook Live, where we always stream the show live, hence the name Hog Sports Live, and YouTube. If you haven't subscribed, uh, then go ahead and do so now. Hit that notifications bell and give us a thumbs up. Danny, most of his stuff, he mentioned the big red board earlier, so most of Danny's stuff is VIP. The hardcore recruiting coverage that he delivers is VIP. Big red board is basically our big picture look at Razorback recruiting for offense and defense, position by positions, trending up and down, whether they're hot, cold, and also delivers a, a breakdown. So be like Fred Miller. Fred Miller says, nice content, just subscribed on 86. Right now, you can sign up for hogsports.com for just $1, H-A-W-G sports.com for your first month, and then regular price after that if you like it. Or you can sign up for a year, take 30% off your first year, and get a seven-day free trial with that. So almost nothing to lose with the best in Razorback coverage. Your number one independent source on the Razorbacks. How about that? Hey, you can get on there right now and read about a four-star running back yeah. named Brandon Campbell for the 21 class. He's down in Pearl in Texas. Don't want to give away too much, but I think, you know, I want to encourage people to go check out what he said about Chad Morris, Jeff Trailer, and where Arkansas is. They offered this guy early, and uh, I think they've, you know, I'm not saying they're going to get him, mm-hmm. but they'll get him here on campus, and uh, and they'll take it from there. But I really, really enjoyed talking to that kid. He's a different different kid, and uh, I think they're in the ball game for Brandon. That's good news. Danny, I want to take you to a little bit. I've saved this for you. I went over just about every every single position group except for quarterback, okay? And where do you think Arkansas goes right now at quarterback? And I'll tell you my opinion. I think it's shaping up exactly the way we've anticipated to where uh, Ben Hicks will get the start and hold on to it for as long as he possibly can. And uh, the moment he proves that it's no longer – going in the right direction, I think that's when you'll see Nick Starkle. But to answer your question, game one, snap one, I think it's going to be Ben Hicks. And I agree with you. I think that's where things are trending right now. And I don't know that that means that's where things will stay because, I mean, the the conversation has been how long until Nick Starkle's talent catches up with the other quarterbacks and their knowledge of the offense. And I don't know that it's right now, right there. I think that what, from my sources inside – We've been able to see practice. What they will tell you is that Hicks moves the ball down the field. Now, he checks down, but he knows where the check downs are. You know, he knows where to go with the ball, so he doesn't always throw the deeper passes. But Starkle will sometimes try to bite off a little more than he can chew and sometimes just doesn't move the ball down the field. This week he has been working with the ones, and that was with somebody who saw him working with the one offense with uh, John Steven and Ben Hicks working with the second group. So maybe that's part of it too, but – Generally, what I hear, you know, it's obvious. You know, you take. I said last week, you know, you take a bunch of people out there and say, which one of these guys they're take all just the throwing the court, yeah. yeah, throwing the ball. Who's who's the starting quarterback? Every one of them's going to pick Nick Starkle. I mean, yeah. um, some may pick. Well, the thing with KJ is he has a big arm, but he, he's sometimes still a little erratic and throw a real wobbly one. Man, uh, that's a good looking kid. But, yeah, there's no question about <laughs> it. Dude, what I man. loved, what I loved about KJ was talking to Grant Morgan. Sometimes mm-hmm. the best people to ask about quarterback are the people with the best view, and that's usually linebackers. So he, what he said about KJ was Joe Craddock pulled him aside and said, um, hey, I want you to start talking a bunch of crap to KJ. Just try to get into his head, bark at him, all that stuff. So they Grant started Morgan doing that. talking crap? Yeah, that's Grant Morgan. <laughs> yeah, so, so they started uh, barking at him and stuff, and KJ goes on to complete five or six passes in a row, and he's high-fiving everybody. So that's a good sign from a young quarterback. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that. Uh, boy, he sure looks good. Every time I, I yeah. look at him, he's kind of one of those dudes that everybody wants to talk about Deshaun Watson, but I remember Joe Craddock saying this past, uh, I guess it was right after signing day, when KJ signed, he said, I think he's a mix between Deshaun Watson and Cam Newton. Mm-hmm. Are you kidding me? That's uh-huh. a pretty good – that's a mouthful. you take that. That's a pretty good – yeah, you'll take that all day. Yeah. All right, Danny. I told you it was going right, to be a short segment. Anything else? Well, uh, nothing that I can think of. No official visitors coming in for game one, Trey. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I think they're trying to avoid uh, some of the in-season officials. Probably don't get to spend as much time with those guys when they're here during no, the game weekend. So, yeah. no real surprise there. But 
off the top, that's that's pretty much it right now. Okay. All right. Appreciate you, Danny. All right, buddy. All Let's right. Do it. So that's Danny West with hogsports.com. Again, $1 for your first month or 30% off your first year at hogsports.com. Danny does a great job. The best recruiting man in the business. I'm going to go ahead and jump. I'm going to get to your questions. I'm going to get to your questions at the end, but I want to bring in Keith Grayson now to talk a little bit. Uh, just shoot some bull. Keith always has great fan perspective um, thoughts on the Razorbacks, so we'll see what he has to say. What up, Trey? What's up, Keith? First ring. Appreciate you picking up. How's it going? Pretty good. I'll try to uh, get back to my old self. You know, I tried to come on with facts last time, and then mm-hmm. you uh, disowned me for six weeks or something. I haven't been on the show for a long time. You haven't been on the show, and that's you know that's the punishment for not performing. I mean, we got to put people in here who are going to perform, who are going to drive the ratings, and you just didn't do that last time. In all seriousness, we really just have not – been able to do the show as much as I like. We, we've been doing it on Fridays the last couple of weeks. We try to do two shows a week. You know, we had SEC Media Days and all that stuff before that. But we love having you on because um, you do provide a, a lot of comic relief also. I'll get back to uh, just borderline uh, cussing and uh, <laughs> my old ways to keep you on your toes. We, yeah. we definitely need a different picture of me on uh, on on the, on the video there. Well, you don't like the picture with the hog. Shirtless. Shirtless picture with the hog and a beverage, I believe. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is a good pick. This is... I look, look a little douchey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like... It's a part of your... had a way and a, part of a your tribal aura. tat from being, like, my worst enemy. <laughs> Keith, so. who's going to start at quarterback from Arkansas? Danny and I already gave our opinion. I want to know yours. I like Starkle. It's going to be Ben Hicks starting out of the gate. Um, I think they've kind of hinted at that a little bit. We're talking about Starkle's turnovers. That's the only thing you really hear about now. Yeah. The interesting thing is, you know, he got hurt in that UCLA game. Somebody brought this up the other day. I don't know where it was, but he's only got one SEC win. Yeah. Starkle does. Yeah. So let's they not were they crown. were rolling on UCLA before he came out of that game, if you remember, also. They were dancing yeah, on I the do. sideline. Yeah, I do remember that game. I, I was actually watching that one, but – no, I'm ready for it, man. I'm ready to pour 84 on Portland State. Send those dudes back backpacking to Maine. Yeah. Unhappy. You know, Trey even went out and scouted them. That is it? Wait, that wait, 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 wait. Is that Maine? Are they in Maine? Do you went to the school, didn't you? Is that why you went out there? Why yeah. else would you go to Portland, Maine? Well, other than the, my wife are you has... like a fan of the show Portlandia? <laughs> That's in Oregon. <laughs> so Port- Portland, Maine's like the size of Conway. It's not very big. You know, um, but my 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 uh, wife's sister, uh, my wife's my wife's brother lives out there, so we were out there. Oh, him. yeah. I thought you got highly confused buying your airline tickets. No, my wife has brothers in Dallas. Um, had one in for, uh, in uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and uh, in Maine. So we kind of every other year made the rounds to to visit each of them. So right on. Well, regardless, I hope we poured on them just because there's a lot of frustration. <laughs> I think the fans and the team have. Um, from from the well for the fans' sake for the past several years, six or seven years, and uh, the guys on the team need to come out and stump somebody. I hope yeah. they don't, you know, just come out flat and I want to embarrass somebody, kind of the way North Texas did to us. Last let's, year, let's beat them, last year they came out flat Texas in the does. opener, and I'll, I'll say this is how I, I kind of remember it last year. Cole Kelly got the start, and I'm thinking to start the second half. Ty Story came in and lit a fire under him. And I can't remember, I think Ty Story came out and started, excuse me, started the second half, I think, if I remember correctly. But I think that's probably how they'll do it this game. I think they will name a starter heading into the game. And then in the second in the second quarter, I could see them giving the series to Starkle. You know, if things are, depending on how things are going. You know, I think, and then maybe going with the guy in the second half. But at the same time, I don't know. They named a starter last year, but still did it that way in the game. So I could see. So how is that? that. How is it going to be different than last? I mean, I just better quarterbacks. Better quarterbacks, but a better two quarterback system. I think initially. I think initially in this game, I think that that we'll see Stark will get a chance, but I think they'll end up going with Hicks just based on and and who knows? There's still a big scrimmage coming up Saturday. There's a big one on Wednesday, 
So there's two scrim- two major scrimmages left to decide um, this quarterback battle. So that you got to take that into account. I mean, we're talking about who's going to win it now. There are two major tryouts remaining still. So let me ask you this. You've been at practice, well, you only, you only see 20 minutes of the mm-hmm. footage, and, and, we're, and we see the footage, I guess. So mm-hmm. do you see a major difference in the offense? Because, you know, I'm thinking I've been always told that Chad Morris's offense, you know, has increased increasingly gotten better over the years that he's been in the school, but it remained flat at SMU in the second year. So he, they averaged 27 points a game in the first year at SMU, 27 points in the uh, second, second year at SMU. Mm -hmm. And we averaged 21 last year. They got a big jump in year three where they went from 27 to 38 points a game. Do you see something like, cause these, I look, I'm kind of a stats dork. So I look at the averages. So if we can flip, our averages on offense and defense points per game of what mm-hmm. we're giving up and, and make some, a, it could be a potentially a two touchdown difference, yeah. you know, in, in I either think, direction. I think one of the big differences this year, Keith, is going to be special teams. I think that's going to, that's going to definitely improve with Sam Lloyd punter. And they say Reed Bowers done some good things. And the times that I've clocked them, actually gone out with a stopwatch and clock kicks, um, I get usually uh, high, uh, bigger hang times, prettier spiral that, you know, hangs in the air a little better. Uh, from um, from Sam Loy. So I think they're going to be better on special teams overall starting out. I think they'll get off to a more uh, a better start in terms of rhythm. I, ju- I just think they're going to be better. I mean, it, that second year at SMU also, you know, they – I don't think they're able to bring in quite the – you know, the the talent of, you know, the tri- quite the type of transfers that they're able to bring in at Arkansas. I think that, that right. has played a role. Ben Hicks was a redshirt freshman starter that year also. So um, – you know he's been through it before, so I don't. I I just feel like when you look at the overall cohesion of the team, the way they practice, the energy level, the way they talk about each other, it just feels different. And somebody made this point and said, "This well, I heard all this stuff last year. You know, you didn't hear it from us. I predicted five. I still overshot it, but I didn't predict them to go to a bowl game. I predicted them to lose to Colorado State, and everybody bit my head off last year. Like, and they." Colorado State lost to Hawaii, and you know, like you still feel good about that prediction? LOL. I mean, people were people were biting my head off about that Colorado prediction, uh, Colorado State prediction. But um, I, I, I literally think I may have been the only media person in Arkansas that predicted them not to go to a bowl game last year. Well, I I think that there and there's been a guy that's been calling into your radio show too that's been saying, "What is is five or six wins really?" Um, he a makes a good up. point. He makes a good point because last year's team probably should beat these non-conference teams also, you know, including Colorado and State at home. And then you're within three single-point losses to SEC teams last year. Yeah, I mean, there. You, that's a good point too. I mean, there are games, you know, the Colorado State game, I think they were like 27-9 to nine up in, in that one. Or maybe that was Ole Miss. But both of those games, they had significant leads in those two games. You know, Texas A&M. They probably could have won that one. I don't know about LSU. You know, LSU would have put another one on them at the end of the game if they wanted to, and they didn't. Um, so, you know, five wins was possibly possible last year too. Well, the, the thing that just scares me is all these injury reports that we were already hearing out of camp. This, And I thought we were staying clean, the, you know, through the first scrimmage and then the one mo- most recently. It's just a yeah. laundry list. Not You know, start getting back to thinking we're – Cursed a little bit as hog fans, and we're going to need to sacrifice a virgin at midfield. And so I, I'm nominating Pete R- R- Roulette, or whatever his name is. Let's put that blockheaded dude out there, and get him before the first game of the season, so we can win eight games this year. Get back on the right track. Oh, Pete's not going to like that. Pete's at the kickoff, uh, the kickoff luncheon right now, enjoying a free there meal. You go. Um, all right. Anything else, Keith? Well, did you ever? Do you think that it's we, do you ever imagine having a conversation if you go back to like when McTelvin Aguim and Armand Watts are being recruited that we'd be having a conversation that we we hope that McTelvin Aguim can replace Armand Watts' <laughs> production? Yeah, on the field? that's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Especially after the first few years with Armand Watts at Arkansas, I just never never seemed to get going. But um, and I I like T.J. Smith too. I, I don't think I think. Pe- think people are sleeping on him i think he's kind of a mm-hmm. smaller darius phylon without the strippers and gun charges he's lost a lot of weight he's like under 280 pounds like 270 something right now but he's he, quick yeah i mean they they need they need guys that can get to the quarterback there's no doubt about it i mean the defense played well at times last year 
Keith, but it just, you know, I think eventually it just kind of totally got away from, you know, there was a let go of the rope mentality, I think, with this team last year. One reason it's good they had so much turnover in the offseason with transfers, but um, I think the defense just gets banged up. They don't have enough depth, and then, you know, you run, you got the offense that's not supporting you, and, you know, things just kind of get away from you. But hopefully they'll be well, better this year. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for the season, and I planned on coming into games. I'll get you out here with this. I was fully anticipating to have a fall season full of travel and, uh, you know, just – kind of taking some time off and then my dumb ass I, I accepted a position and uh as a high school football coach again so I'm back I'm back in the box tonight uh. <laughs> actually for a scrimmage um but I, I like I love sitting in the booth and kind of calling down the stuff and, and telling everybody what I see on the field so that, that um I'm doing that for offense and defense this year so coaching oh, secondary nice. at a school where I was hired and the reason that I got the job and even found out about it was that one of my best friends is the offensive coordinator, and he was trying to get me over there. But then, and I wasn't really having it because it's coaching high school football mm-hmm. is like a second full time job. And I responded to something on the Razorback Instagram page, and this guy replied to me and was like, We have Hog fans out here in Phoenix. The head coach of this program is a Razorback fan. And our linebackers coach went to Arkansas Baptist, huh. and uh, we met through the Arkansas Razorback Instagram page. How random is that? Nice. That's how we got linked up. So, nice. anyway, nice. Um, looking forward to being immersed in football all year now. So, well, good luck to you, uh, Keith. That sounds fun, Coach Grayson. Coach Grayson, there you again. go. All right, man. Coach, they call me Coach G Money, but Coach G Money. All right, all right, G Money. We'll see you later. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Great to see you. <laughs> all right. All right. That is Keith Grayson, always entertaining. Coach Keith Grayson, former disgraced founder and president of the Arizona Razorback Club, thanks to a night of um, all kinds of strange things that happened that got him kicked out of that club that he founded. Uh, Keith has been with us at hogsports.com for a number of years, and you can be with us at hogsports.com right now for a dollar for your first month and engage in our message board where we break all kinds of insider information, recruiting news, stuff on the team that you just can't get anywhere else. So one dollar for your first month at hawgsports.com or um, 30% off your first year. Pretty good deals. Plenty of ways to watch and listen. Facebook Live, where we always stream the show live. YouTube, also hit that thumbs up, subscribe, notifications bell. Apple Podcasts, I'm going to answer some questions before we get out. But before we go, rate us on Apple Podcasts. Give us a review. We'd love to have it, Spotify and Stitcher. So, all right, let's get to these questions. Rick Presser says, I want an undefeated season. Who's with me? Not many people, Rick. Not many people. Matt Worley says, O-line concerns me. Don't see much improvement this year. Hope I'm wrong. I think they're going to be improved for the simple fact that they started camp with 16 scholarship offensive linemen. Right there. I mean, that's a huge improvement uh, over last year. I mean, they had like eight in camp. So you're not able to promote and demote. I thought Jeff Trailer said it best. He's like, you know, I'm sure my wife would love to replace me, so I'm always on my best behavior. (laughs) I thought that was a great line for him. So, um yeah, I think the offensive line will be better. I think they just needed some new blood, another year in the system. I think they're going to be better overall. Plus, you know, they're able to handle more offense. The offense has got like, um, what, 70, 75% of the offense installed versus 30% of the very base package last year. So shows you they're able to handle more. Um, Smith likes to the ball on the ground, to put the ball on the ground, says Matt Worley. He did have a fumble, so he'll have to get better at that. They have been preaching ball security a lot. He's got a year to focus on his craft, get better at ball security, Matt. Um, Steve Cole says, I'd like to be good enough sometime to give the power of the conference a run for their money. You know, I think, obviously, Stephen, that's not this year. This year is about watching a team improve, trying to get to a bowl game, and having some encouragement for a young team next year. It can be a fun season if you look at it like that. I think it really can be. So we'll see what the future looks like after this year. Pat Murphy says, how's the O-line looking so far? I think I answered that, Pat. Will Cordsmeyer says, I'm hearing Luke Jones has a good chance of getting immediately eligible pending a letter from Brian Kelly to the NCAA. Any update on that situation would be a big help with Noah going down I, I'm not hearing that it's like great right now but we'll see we'll see how things go I mean 
you never know with the NCAA. They'll surprise you sometimes. Kevin Branch says, can the O-line keep Hicks off his back this season? We will find out. Hicks gets the ball out pretty quick. That is another difference with him and Starkle is he's getting the ball out quicker than Starkle is right now. Michael Martin says Hicks or Starkle. We kind of went over that. I think that was earlier before we went over it, Michael. I hope we answered all that for you. A lot of concern about INTs from Hicks. Uh, I mean, they're all pretty much, from what I can see, sh- throwing them at, a, at the same rate. And you may be talking about last season, James, um, you know, where he did throw more interceptions than you'd feel comfortable with. Kevin Branch says, well, it will be Hicks. Pat Murphy says, I like Starkle. So a lot of people all over the place. Justin Carter says, do we have a kicker? Connor Limpert returns at kicker. Has gotten better and better about putting the ball deeper each year. But he's a senior this year and has been one of the most accurate kickers in Razorback history. So they should be good at kicker. Bark Wilkerson says, Starker, Starkle. Rashawn K. Johnson says, do we have a special teams coach this year? Is it still by committee? Uh, it is Barry Lunny Jr. is the on-field coach. And they have a guy that's, you know, obviously eye in the sky type analyst. But Barry Lunny Jr. has taken over that title this year. Hope they have a great season, says Donna Jones. They call him Pick 6 Hicks, says James Carr. That was something that he added last year to his title at SMU. Bart Wilkinson says answers the question, Barry Lunny Jr., yes. Brandon Atwell says, do you think Hunter's younger brother red shirts this fall? No, I don't think he'll play. He did get a little bit behind because of the concussion protocol. Tight end is the second hardest position to learn on offense. So at some point he'll get there. Rashawn says, Bumper, that's my guy. Talking about Bumper pull. Brent Wood says, do you think we could see two-quarterback system with Hicks and Starkle? I think it's possible in this first game. You see both of them. You'd like to see that get sorted out. I think they'll name a starter but play both of them in the first game. Kevin Branch says, Hicks has one year of eligibility. It will be his job to lose. I kind of get that impression going in. You know, Starkle has to take the job from Hicks kind of deal. Will they be better than expected on the five game? I think it's going to be close. Five, I think they'll get an SEC win. I think it's possible, too. I've said before, I think, you know, uh, Ole Miss week two, Kentucky, Mississippi State, Missouri. Um, let's see if I got anything unique here. How many years does Traylon Smith have left? He'll have two years. So he burned his freshman year with one carry. His second year he had eight carries for like 45 yards in a game and then fumbled and then had one carry each of the next few games. So he, he'll he be – he's a redshirt sophomore this year, so he'll be a redshirt junior next year. Let's see. Who will be returning kickoffs? Devion Warren, most likely candidate there. I don't think they've worked a whole lot there. Um, did Morris call plays at Clemson? Does he call plays now? Morris did call plays at Clemson and called him for, I think, the first couple of years at SMU. And then um, Joe Craddock took over as primary play call. Now, they're going to discuss the whole thing, obviously, uh, at Craddock will call plays now. But Morris is definitely going to have input. I mean, they – you know, it's usually some things like, hey, how about this play, or I want to run this play here, or you're going to have four downs to get it into the end zone or to make the first down here, you know, that kind of communication. Give me a run play, or I want to get it to Rakeem Boyd more on this drive. You know, that kind of input from the head coach. But usually uh, play callers call the play. Ron Stapler says, what's your thoughts on this team this year? Yeah, I think I've kind of gone over that. But I'm thinking five, six wins. I think I'm leaning towards six wins this year right now. Just based on how, what I've seen in camp, what I hear behind the scenes, uh, I'm thinking maybe six wins. Of course, it, it, a lot's going to depend on the quarterbacks. I mean, we don't know what that's going to be exactly yet. Texas A&M lost Clemson by two – Beat us out by seven, only nine points from a championship, national championship. Good point. <laughs> Nathan New- Nevlov says, love the trans transitive property. Yes, that was transitive property for sure. Our offensive line seems much lighter than in previous years. They are a little bit lighter, especially the younger guys. I mean, they want them 300, 315 pounds, 18 to 22% body fat. Um, but, yeah, they seem just a little bit light, especially, the you know, the freshmen. There's nobody that's like – Massively huge. Maybe it's your boys you want to. Uh, Ray Stapler says, I joined two weeks ago. Never knew what I was missing. And that's what we tell people. That's what we always tell people. Thank you, Ray. You don't know exactly what you're missing at hogsports.com without subscribing. People say all the time that people get the same information. Everybody's reporting the same thing. It's just not true. And people like Ray Stapler, they realize that once they go into the door. That's always been our thing. That's why we ran that big promotion. It's always difficult getting people through the door initially. People come through. But uh, we wanted to make a huge push, and we did. We actually moved all the way up to number 16 site in the 24-7 sports network in the country. If you like the content that we have on Hog Sports, 
and on Hog Sports Live. Throw us that thumbs up now if you haven't done so already. Facebook Live, YouTube, subscribe, thumbs up, hit the notifications bell. Apple Podcasts, now's the time to go throw us that five-star review and a rating. We'd love to have that from you, Spotify and Stitcher. All right, everybody, thanks for joining me at hogsports.com. I don't know if we'll have the show Monday or not. It just depends on how things break down next week, but the camp is a grind, and sometimes it's hard to get away to do a production like this. So uh, get in while you can. All right, thanks for Keith Grayson and Danny West joining us. This has been Trey Biddy with hogsports.com, and we'll catch you next time.